Welcome to another Linley's video. Hi, I'm Warren Brandon. Today I'd like to show you the final assembly and installation of the signal box mimic panel for Woodgate Crescent Station on Linley's Garden Railway. The previous video covered the fabrication of the board itself. Do watch that if you've missed it so far. So, the board is ready to populate with switches and indicators. I have here a short aluminium bar drilled ready to mount behind the switch array. This will prevent the board from flexing when the switches are operated and also provide a strong suspension point for the panel while it's hanging out from the signal box during assembly and maintenance. The switches are standard toggle SPST switches and will be mounted in a line just below the track diagram. Many model railway mimic panels follow the more modern approach to panel layout with the switches laid out around the track diagram, but I've chosen to model the idea of using a row of control switches below the indicated track panel like frame levers in an old signal box. The set of switches are mounted so that their contacts are open when the switches are put back into the frame and putting the signals at danger or the points back to normal. There are some other features on the board, including the single box bell and an emergency stop button, but I'll focus on these in later videos. With the row of switches installed, the next job is to add all the indicator LEDs. I've chosen to include metal bezels as these will help shade the LEDs in the sunshine and I just like the effect that they have on the board. Putting the bezels in first, they're in groups around the track plan. The ones along the track lines are track occupation indicators. These will be white LEDs. The signal repeaters are positioned just off the track lines with red, amber and green LEDs. For the points, blue LEDs indicate whether the points are reversed or the route is set to not normal. In this station area, that will mean the points are set to enter or depart from the loop line. Pushing all the LEDs in with their plastic holding plugs too is a very time-consuming, fiddly job. I'm aligning up all the legs of the LEDs so that I can run a common wire for the cathodes between the rows. The feeds to the LEDs will be via separate wires with current limiting resistors. I'm using 330 ohm resistors for most of the LEDs, but the green ones work best with 220 ohms. The control system operates on a regulated 5 volt supply. Our family cat has been showing an interest today in the Mimic Panel too, although I don't think she's subscribed to my channel yet.
This video is absolutely not a how to solder tutorial, but it's worth commenting here how important it is to use clean soldering iron tips and a quality solder with a flux core. I'm not an advocate of using separate flux. The pre-tinning of some pieces helps too. Each joint needs a little tug to make sure that it's mechanically fixed as well. Just to make sure that each LED is connected up OK, I'm testing each one quickly with a USB 5V supply with a 330 ohm resistor in the circuit. Right, installation in the garden is next and this will be a real coming together of the project. The stainless steel fixing bolts and the captive nuts arrived in the post so a couple of holes later I can install these here for the mimic panel and two more to hold on the lower cover. Some railway modellers have their mimic panels on hinged frames, but here I've decided to simply add two string cords to suspend the panel face down, ready for assembly and maintenance. To begin with, I'm adding the main 5V system supply connections. The switches need a shared positive supply and the LEDs need a shared negative link for their cathodes. I spent over three hours on this piece of work and I've just included snippets of video to keep this episode to a reasonable length.
Last year, I installed three of the section controllers, so part of the Mimic panel will work when I power it up. For the first time since last summer, I'm powering up the system. The various modules successfully boot up and complete their self-tests. All of the working indicators flash briefly, an unusual panel display, but very reassuring confirmation that all is well. If you like my videos about the ongoing development of Lindley's Garden Railway, please do help the channel along by tapping the like button. And if you've not yet subscribed, please tap on that too. In later videos, I'll cover further work, including the final installation of the section control modules, building the points control unit, finishing the program of the interlock management module, and much more. But until next time, thanks for watching and bye for now.